Hi, this is Antti from React Studio. We released an update to React Studio, which contains a big update for for Xano and generic JSON plugin. And uh, the new feature for both of these is that you may now you can now connect your uh, custom API endpoints directly from a button click. In previous versions, you always had to do everything through the either write a script or through the data sheets but now if you have a api endpoint which just put for, for example sends an email or does a edits a edit something in a in a in a database you can just simply call that custom api endpoint with a button click so i'll just show you how uh, quickly how it works and uh, this is my xano backend I was I have two two tables user and feedbacks and uh, obviously the feedbacks table just contains uh, feedbacks from 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 the form that we're going to build in the in the studio it has feedback feedback text and and name and uh, in the API I've created custom API endpoint called create feedback and uh, that basically takes two inputs it's a feedback text and name and then uh, this function stack here creates creates the feedback row into feedbacks uh, data table and then we get a response back to the back to the caller so let's go to the react studio side i've already connected this this uh, project to uh, to my xano backend uh, so here's the xano plugin and i've downloaded one data sheet which is the feedbacks actually i can just reload it and i should get a new row here because i had two feedbacks in the in the database and in the front end i have a one screen which has uh, two two fields uh, name field and uh, text area and then there's a validator which is now uh, currently hidden and uh, the validator just checks that let's let me select the validator here it checks that the field name and text area feedback they both have something written into i could create a script for 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 example checking that the name must be five characters long or whatever what you want to do with the script but now it's just required that you have to have something in the in the fields and then i have a button so let's call this button send or uh, I mean not call this button as a send but uh, change the text to a send and now we get to the important part that that's new so I, I go to interact when user taps and under the save data there's a tab called plugin and here I can just select the Xeno plugin and I get this UI and this is the new thing so there's like four things here it's the endpoint obviously this is the endpoint URL and uh, you can add data slots into the URL, and then there's a method get post delete, pretty uh, pretty simple, and then the body of the response. So you can add uh, you can add at the the variables what what you want to send to the uh, API uh, within the body of the response, and then we can save the response back to the data slot so whatever it returns we can read it to the data slot and show it in the in the uh, ui so the endpoint was let me check it was create feedback so i can just copy this one and just put it there and then here i can uh, uh, in the body i we can uh, collect the data from the from the ui and uh, that that would be I already have have this written here so I I can just copy paste it here so there are two uh, two items in this JSON it's the feedback text and that equals this dot state dot text area feedback which is obviously just the name of the of the field here and then the name variable input will be this dot state dot field name which is this field here so you can just pipe in uh, the, f the field uh, name of the field here and the studio will automatically generate the code which will uh, which will replace this this part here with the with the uh, field value 
so just just remember to put it in the dollar sign and like this this is the proper way of of uh, injecting variables here and the method is post and then we're going to save the response back to the data slot called response and now we can now we can uh, just uh, connect this text here to this data sl data slot so we so we have the uh, here it is so we get the response visible after we click the send button here so I'll double check that we have everything here ready and I can just now uh, generate the code and see how it looks and now we have app running in the browser so I've opened the browser uh, developer tools here so we can see see the, uh, the 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 API endpoint when we're calling it so I'll just try to do this and uh, I should get a unable to locate request let's add a feedback and now if I click send Okay, if I check the check the uh, response here, it looks like I made a typo in the in the actual studio file. So let's go back to the send send data and see. Yeah, it's there's a creates somewhere there. So I just needed to fix that and then just regenerate the code. And now we should be now we should have it. So I can type in my message. We are great, and just click send. And here we can see it. It made a this kind of uh, call to the API, and it it re returned the, actually the the object that that we just created. And if we go to the Xano feedbacks table, I can just refresh it, and it looks like we have it have it here. So finally, I could uh, add a list here where I sh where I show show all the feedbacks. So let's just create another screen. Feedbacks. This could be uh, called the feedbacks list, and uh, this could be on uh, under the protected by the sign up field. So this could be sort of like an admin admin view. But uh, in this tutorial, I'm not going to just I'm not going to add the login gate, but you could do it easily. Basically, for the screen, you would set that require uh, active login in the login gate. Anyway, let's build this build the list here. I'll drag two elements here, two text elements. I just duplicated those. And this will be called. This is the name, and this will be feedback and this is just the placeholder text and probably we want to have the have the uh, time as well so let's let's put this time and we don't need, uh, in this case we don't have to care about the naming of this but it's good practice to use proper names in every every component but anyway I will just select all of these and just click make a list and we'll choose the data sheet which is the feedbacks and uh, now we've generated the list i'll make it full width so that it's zero pixels from left and right and now we can dive into the list item component uh, first i'm going to align these so that they are aligned from left and right and let's put it maybe 20 from left and minus 20 from right and maybe the name could be headline and uh, time could be secondary text the color of the time could be secondary text and uh, finally i will add a quick spacer here so we have some space uh, between every every list item and maybe add a background element from here and change the color of the of the element to i don't know let's have something maybe something like that and make a little bit room there and then connect the the uh, the properties here so the 
name will be connected to the text of the name element here. Now you can see that there's a there's a property generated and then the feedback text will be here like this and for the time I can just change uh, select it from here create it at it will be probably a unix timestamp but we'll see it and then when it's used in a list it automatically populates the data basically what it does that it makes the linkages uh, automatically but you can set them here as well so that the properties will be the props will be uh, uh, linked from the from the data source and finally i think we need to add a button to actually go to the go to the list screen so let's just add a button here which is feedbacks and add a go to the interaction and now we have a connection between these two and let's just generate the, regenerate the code and write another Michael uh, you are the best place to work and click send and we can head to the link feedbacks list and now we have the all the feedbacks here as, as I as I was expecting the the timestamp is Unix timestamp so you would need to create us make a script which translates this to something more user friendly and finally I think we could add a one interaction after the create feedback we could have a clear uh, input fields which basically clears these after the successful uh, sending the feedback to the uh, to our API and for the feedback list uh, we could add a back button or we could use the, actually we could use the uh, the back back button that the navigation bar has so we can just at the navigation bar for the for the for the main screen so when we go to the back feedback list we will have the back button there as well so let's just generate the regenerate the code and if I navigate to the feedbacks list now I have back button there let's add another one I don't like the way you serve food and send and now the form is cleared and uh, we have the, the the let's refresh this so we have the yes we have the new uh, new uh, item added here uh, if you want to refresh the, this list immediately after the after the uh, sending the form you could do it do it so that there's a third one which is a third interaction which is refresh data sheet and uh, just refresh it so it will refresh the data sheet and we will load the latest data so so you don't have to refresh the screen here and again I could do is this then I like pencils and click send and then go to feedbacks and I have it here immediately so that's that's how you can call custom API endpoints uh, it, it's it's actually really really versatile feature so you just have to figure out what you want to uh, what kind of body you have in the in the API call and how do you how do you have the uh, what kind of endpoint link URL you have so if you have uh, dynamic things here for example feed create feedback ID something then you just have to work out with the data slots there and thank you for watching and um, see you in the next video